What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's time for episode three of uh, the Reflector Files Q and A. So, a lot of uh, a lot of good questions in here. Um, just got back from Target, toy hunting for some uh, GI Joes. <laughs> they didn't have any, so I'm up kind of early on a Saturday. So, uh, figured maybe I can knock this out. Uh, so let's start on Facebook. Uh, Brian Mashner asks, MP, 3P, 4B, 4P boxes, do you collect and store them, break them down, ever plan to display or organize or straight to trash? Uh, <laughs> it took me a while, but straight to trash. I used to hang on to them, and then I realized one day I didn't know why I was hanging on to them, and uh, so now they're all out for the garbage. I did actually hang on to my official MP boxes for a while and just got rid of third party and just hung on to only the boxes of stuff I thought maybe I would sell one day. And uh, you know, now I just throw them all out. I actually have a pile to go out now, so um, yeah. Um, there's a video, a couple videos I did on it, and I'm gonna put those links right here, and uh, you can check that out for yourself. Uh, Jerry, next up is Jerry Racha. Um, here's a long debated question. In Transformers the movie, who became Cyclonus and the Sweeps? Was it Skywarp, Thundercracker, and the Insecticons? Or were they just creations from Unicron's molten waste of dead bots? So, here's what I think. I'm a big horror movie fan, so I like the whole horror movie aspect of what that all could be. And Unicron was around since the beginning of time. Uh, so, we got a couple animals running around here. Um, he was around from the beginning of time, so chances are he learned a bunch of tricks uh, in his time in existence and probably consumed so many planets. And if you really look into like the supernatural aspect of that, must have consumed the souls, the robot souls of some badasses. Um, no, not even that they need to be robots, but just uh, you know a lot of a lot of um, a lot of insane bad guys along the way. And the way I look at it, when he recreated those guys, which by the way, I think Skywarp is Cyclonus, Thundercracker is uh, is uh, Scourge, and I, I see like the Insecticons maybe as the sweeps, but I see that whole thing as a horror movie. Like if you look at Scourge, it reminds you of Dracula a little bit. Um, Cyclonus kind of looks like a bat <laughs> a little bit, I guess, a vampire maybe. Um, so maybe I see Unicron kind of rebuilding the all the dying Decepticons as those guys and maybe having them possessed by some of these terrible figures from across the universe that he consumed along the way um and as for Megatron maybe he just didn't need to uh he didn't see the need for any improvement so to speak in uh in how much of a psychopath Megatron already was which is why he might have maintained his personality and just kind of stepped it up on the on the insanity meter a little bit as Galvatron. So that, that's kind of how I see it all happening. But uh, yeah, that's a good question. An old question, but a good one. And hopefully I have a unique take on it. Uh, next up on Facebook, Sean Webb. Here's a Transformers concept question for you, though somebody else may have already asked it. In G1, the combiners mostly use the same five member configuration. Uh, what would the result of having a mixed group, say Scattershot and Nose Cone of the Technobots, Air Raid and Skydive of the Aerobots, and Blades of the Protectobots attempting to combine? Do you think that they would be able to? And if so, would the resulting combiners, what would the resulting combiners mind be? So that that was, it's kind of covered, not, um, I don't think they included Scattershot, any of the Technobots or Terracons, but at least the earlier combiners, uh, Defensor, Superion, Bruticus, and Menasaur. Um, Scramble City, check out Scramble City. Put that right there. Uh, they they kind of they didn't really go totally in depth into it as it was just one episode, so that it could probably be expanded on a little bit. But the basic concept was covered in Scramble City. Uh, next up on Facebook, Kevin Starkey. It's a music question, which I love, by the way. Uh, Thanks for doing these videos and for the opportunity to submit questions. I enjoy the chance to get to learn from those who share similar interests as mine. Lots of questions come to mind, but I'll of course respect the one question limit. I began playing guitar at the age of 16. I was never formally trained and learned by ear listening to almost exclusively all the Metallica albums uh, from the Black album onto Kill 'Em All. 
Who were your biggest influences when it came to developing an interest in playing guitar and molding your musical choices as a musician? So early on, it's kind of weird. Um, early on, I listened to uh, I listened to a lot of '80s <laughs> '80s metal, metal and hair metal. Um, so uh, I got one of the one of the cheeses coming this way. Um, Early on, it was all about the Shredders, man. Eddie Van Halen, uh, Zach Wilde, Steve Vai, um, George Lynch, who was wasted in Dokken, if you really want my honest opinion. I'm, I'm glad they put Lynch Mob together because I like Lynch Mob a lot more than Dokken. But uh, regardless of the band, he was still on Monster, George Lynch was. Uh, but honestly, that's not really what my plan ended up becoming. It, it became more of, um, I would say that my style, here she is. I would say that my style is more kind of a poor man slash poor man's Angus Young, pretty much. Um, but then I, I ended up getting other influences too because I, I started singing as well. And um, a couple of my favorite lead singers, uh, Sebastian Bach from Skid Row, Chris Cornell, um, and John Karabi. And if you haven't heard of John Karabi, you should definitely check him out. Um, he was in a band called The Scream. Union, and he was on one album, uh, a Motley Crue album, which, <laughs> uh, and I'm in the minority on this one, but I think that was Motley Crue's greatest album. It was the 94 album, and I just think it, it just kicked ass, and Karabi was on that, and, and you know, as a singer, just blows Vince Neil out of the water. So, yeah, those are a couple of my influences. Um, but yeah, good question. Uh, next up, Gabriel, Gabriel Tovar. What are your thoughts on Weejang getting busted by the feds? Many people seem upset, which to be honest, I could see, but it was also one of those things that was bound to eventually happen. You think this will someday or somehow domino into the rest of the third party market? Um, so my thoughts on Weejang, yeah, it's, man, I have a little bit of a hypocritical view towards KOs. Like, I think it's crappy when designs and figures are, are, are stolen. You know, when, when somebody works on them so hard and then another company gets a hold of them and, and KOs them. Um, but I bought them in the past. Uh, not before I bought the officials, but in the case of like Yes Model. Um, you know, they were, they made some improvements on the original and they, they also put out some color schemes and characters that weren't available, the Seekers I'm talking about. So, um, you know, but as far as I'm busted and getting busted, uh, I mean, I really, <laughs> I kinda don't care. Uh, I didn't get a lot of stuff from them. You know, it, it was a shame that they didn't go into more original molds. I did get their uh, Omega Supreme, actually the blue droid, the blue drone uh, Omega Supreme from Lee Jang, and it was a cool figure. So I wish they would have got into more original stuff. But um, will it somehow domino into the rest of the third party market? And I, the answer is no. Um, I don't want to go into the whole, whole you know, uh, intellectual property discussion and all that kind of stuff, but the, the fact that third party does all original um, molds and designs and engineering um, makes it a little tough for that to happen so uh, no I don't think I don't think you have anything to worry about there next question SLB vlog uh, and you should check his channel out that's a it's a good channel a lot of good reviews on there that's my boy Josh uh, <laughs> what song gets you pumped up that you want to that you want to fight mine is tub thumping by Chumbawamba I asked him if he was serious about that, and I hope he's not, but you never know with that guy. Uh, but in answer to your question, I have two good ones that pop into the top of my head. One of them is Enemy by Seven Dust, and the other one is The Constant by Anthrax. I get, the song's getting me fired up, man. Getting fired up. Uh, next up, Michael Welch. If you could play any instrument that you don't already know how to play, what would it be and why? Um, the answer to that one is the piano. I would love to uh, learn how to play the piano. It's such a pretty instrument. Um, it's like I pick up a guitar. I don't want to say fairly easy, but you know, I put in a lot of work on it. But um, I don't know. I felt felt like that was easier to understand than piano. I tried to pick up piano a little bit, and it it, it didn't go my way. But I would like to eventually learn how to play piano, I like the keys, man. Uh, let's see. All right, next up, uh, John. Birkenmeyer, Birkenmeyer, Birkenmeyer. You have to, you have to straighten me out on how to pronounce your name. I think it's Birkenmeyer. Uh, his question is: I love the Dreamwave War Within series of comics and loved how the characters were displayed in their Cybertronian modes. We saw some of that in G1 as well. 
Some companies have tried to do the Cybertronian style Transformers with not much interest or not getting the modes to look right. Would you like to see more Cybertronian modes of the characters from G1? Enjoying your videos. Uh, stay safe and thanks so much. You stay safe as well. And thanks for thanks for participating. So, um, of course, I would love to see it. Um, the problem is that, you know, maybe it's, a, maybe it's something that a lot of other collectors are running into is, a, is an issue of space. Um, like, I like my collection room to kind of look like a like a, a museum you know I want everything to be properly displayed and everything nice and clean and laid out so you can kind of see everything no matter how much stuff is in there uh, but for me it's a matter of space and if I start piling figures on top of figures on top of figures then it just kind of starts to look like a mess so I try to stay a little bit choosy about what I collect um, if I had you know a little bit more budget and a larger place and a larger collection room, maybe I would collect that stuff. But as of right now, I can't personally collect it. Um, that doesn't mean I wouldn't like to see it. I would love to see it. Um, yeah, we saw a couple in the, in the first couple episodes, the Tetra Jets, of course, and Wheeljack and Bumblebee, uh, and the, the Soundwave Lake Hole and, and all that stuff. Um, so it would be cool to kind of see what the rest of the cast look like in, uh, in their Cybertron modes. But, could I collect them? No. Would people collect them? I'm sure they would. I'm sure people have gotten some of the ones that have come out so far, but maybe it just doesn't um, have enough interest to to actually do it as a line. You know, maybe it's not sustainable. That's kind of hard to say. Uh, but yeah, as for just seeing them, I would love to see them. <laughs> I would love my friends to buy them so I could see them up close without having to spend the money on them. Uh, we're going to switch over to Instagram. Ryan Savage 96 asks... What is your least favorite G1 character? Uh, Wheelie. Man, I could do without Wheelie. I feel like Wheelie, Wheelie was like the Jar Jar Binks of the Transformers world before Jar Jar Binks was the thing, obviously. I don't know why every franchise has to have that character and it like drives me crazy, but yeah, Wheelie was kind of annoying. And it wasn't the rhyming because like Roadblock rhymed and Roadblock, Roadblock was cool. Wheelie was just, Willie was annoying. I don't know how else to say it. Get rid of Willie. And I have a Willie in my collection, but you know. Next up, Dr. Zay9000 writes in, uh, would you ever put your music on Spotify? So I had a lot of people ask that, and and uh, at some point when I have enough of it, and, and I wanna you know look up how to get it on Spotify and, and iTunes and some other places, I definitely will, but if you're watching this and you're interested in any music on this channel, um, I completely uh, support you stealing it off of this channel. If you can find some YouTube uh, converters that, that rip MP3s or whatever, I'm giving you full permission. Take the music, listen to it, enjoy it. Uh, the only thing that I ask is that if you do take it to use as background music for something that you did, if you could just drop credit in, in the links uh, and link back to it where you got the song on my channel and that would be awesome but um as far as having the music if you want to take it <laughs> um and uh and when i eventually put it on spotify and, and some of those other platforms I'll, I'll definitely let you know but um we don't we don't really make music to make money at this point i'm just we do it to to enjoy ourselves and 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 have fun with it and stuff so we want you guys to have fun listening to it uh, a couple more questions over here on youtube <clears throat> onslaught 64 what is your favorite thing about your collection? And I love what you're doing with this series. Well, thank you. And thank you for uh, um, dropping a line. Uh, my, my favorite thing about my collection, it just reminds me of uh, what was a fun childhood and watching cartoons and collecting action figures and all that stuff. And I'm glad that I'm an adult um, with a job that makes me a little bit of extra money that I'm able to spend on this stuff. And and I guess my favorite thing about the collection is is you know, sometimes I'm, I find myself walking in there just to maybe grab a figure or to take a picture or, or do whatever. And, I, and then I end up in there for half an hour just kind of sitting on the floor and just looking around. You know, it's a museum of, of my past as a toy collector and cartoon watcher and and, uh, and all that stuff. You know, it's a great franchise and I like having the G1 stuff all around. And I'm, I love that Masterpiece and Third Party have tackled more um, accurate cartoon screen accurate uh, representations of all these characters and I love having it all and it's just uh, it's a cool spot man it's a cool spot away from reality which I think is why a lot of us collect in the first place 
Thank you for the question. Uh, up next, Retro Now. Uh, check out the Retro Now channel. That's a, that's a fun channel. Um, he writes in two questions. I'll allow it. I don't usually allow a second question, but, you know, it's a short two. His first one is, Beast Wars interest you at all? Uh, the answer is no. I could, I could do without Beast Wars. I don't hate Beast Wars. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those people that doesn't accept it because it's not G1, like, it's fine, and it was a well-written show, and, you know, but I, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't really, ha I don't have any interest in the figures, and I don't have any interest in, uh, the franchise as a whole, but it was good, it was alright, you know, um, and if you do enjoy it, that's cool, but it's just not my thing. Uh, I did enjoy a lot of their appearances in the IDW comics, though. I thought that was, they were well, um, they were well added to that universe. I like, you know, Rat Trap and Tarantulas and a couple of the other ones. I thought that was cool that they were all fit, they all fit into the same universe, though. Uh, and his second question is, uh, where do babies come from? Uh, and the answer to that, more often than not, is alcohol and bad decisions. So, just try to watch out for yourself. And last, uh, but not least, um, Tailgate 009. Actually, no, this isn't last. Uh, there, there was another one on here, and I'm going to have to remember that from memory because I forgot to write it on here. But um, uh, Tailgate 009, with how cool Dwayne The Rock Johnson was with voicing Cliff Jumper in Transformers Prime, and how it sucked he died five minutes later while making his debut. If there was another wrestler uh, given the opportunity to voice a Transformer, say the Nature Boy, <laughs> Ric Flair for instance, uh, who do you think he'd fit well with? Or do you have a better person in mind? Who would you select? So, I know I know, Whirl was never in the cartoon, but if I picture anybody uh, for Ric Flair to voice, I would say that Whirl, just judging on his personality from IDW. Um, by the way, I do have, uh, I have my cup of the purple here in my... My Eagles Cup, go birds. Um, yeah, whirl. But uh, but I did come up with two other, two other wrestlers. So I got the Undertaker, voicing the Seeker Dirge. I thought that was kind of a cool fit. Um, and another one, and this one's kind of out of left field. But if you really think about it, I feel like it fits. Um. Stone Cold. Stone Cold Steve Austin as Iron Eye. And if you really think about it, I think that one fits. You know, the Texas Rattlesnake, Iron Eye's got kind of a Southern farm boy thing going on or whatever, kind of an ass kicker. Um, so I think that one kind of fits as well. Uh, so you know what, I don't wanna, I don't wanna misquote the last question because I forgot to write it down. I'm just gonna stop this video for a second. All right, cool. So there was somebody that wrote in on the on the last video, and I forgot to write that down. So I'm gonna read it right off the right off the post here. Uh, so this is Pack checking in. Uh, what up, sons? What are those albums that were so influential as a kid that blew your mind? Uh, so he lists a couple of his. Um, so 5150, uh, and he lists Get Up as a song. That was a great song, man. Uh, Appetite for Destruction, Hysteria. It was a lot from the 80s that were great, but for me, those stand out. Uh, and Justice for All, he adds, Shout at the Devil, um, he adds, and there was, where else did he have? And then he says he, uh, when it comes to the early 90s, those influential albums are much more different, more towards skate thrash, but we get hit on those another day. So, yeah, you know, you kind of named, well, you named three of my big ones right out of the gate, man. Appetite for Destruction, um, 5150, and, uh, and Shout. Now, Shout came out a little earlier when we were younger, so I picked up on that one a little later, but, um, you know, when I was growing up, man, 5150 came out when I was 10, and Appetite when I was 11, so that was, like, right in that sweet spot, you know, when we were really kind of, like, getting into music and stuff, and, you know, both of those albums started off with ones that fire you up, you know, Welcome to the Jungle to this day, no matter how many times I hear it, man, when I hear that opening riff kick in, it, like, it fires me up, and, uh, and on 5150, good enough, if I remember correctly, good enough is the opening track. And man, as soon as you hear Sammy Hagar, 
with that hello baby man and then that riff kicks in that that lights you up too man um a lot of good songs get up that's a great song but both of those albums really are all killer no filler and then shout at the devil with that with the you know children of the beast opening right in the shot at the devil you know that was that was just so so good such a good opener and too young to fall in love is on that album um the version of Helter Skelter, yeah, that was a great album too. Another one that was kind of influential was um, was Black Sabbath, man. You know, I remember <laughs> Paranoid and and War Pigs and the song Black Sabbath. I'll tell you a funny story. So I was a little tour back one night, and uh, and it was it was not, it was real late, and it was one of the first times I listened to that album, and it was during Christmas, so I had just a couple lights on. And that's all the lights on that were on in the room. The rest was complete darkness. And I was spinning that Black Sabbath album. And uh, it was uh, it was it was just the atmosphere, you know, especially if you're a little bit gooned, man. And I was just sitting there on the couch just taking that album in, man. And that changed that changed my musical life, you know. Um, definitely gonna have some Black Sabbath, especially some early Black Sabbath, man. Uh, not that not that the, the later stuff isn't good and to be honest with you I love a lot of the Dio stuff but uh, but when it comes to Black Sabbath man that early stuff is just awesome so yeah the, that the Black Sabbath and Appetite 5150 is a great one Shout is awesome yeah we're, we're pretty much on the same page on those man so so that's a that's a pretty good list but yeah we'll get we'll get back on those 90s albums man because I got some good ones in the 90s too if you guys uh, would like to see some music videos, like maybe, you know, top 10, my top 10 rock bands or top 10 guitar players or, or some sort of like top five or top 10 list or whatever, like I would be definitely down with doing that. I just don't know how much, how many music fans we got on this channel. I'm assuming everybody loves music. So we can kind of mix that in with the, uh, with the transformer videos a little bit. But anyway, um, thanks for everybody that, that uh, contributed questions. These are fun. I love doing them. Uh, we'll do some more in the future. Hopefully you uh, you dug this one. And, uh, and we'll see you next time, man. Uh, more to come.